in sports, if you want to be the best, there are no off days. Oh, we are off and running. Welcome into the No Off Days podcast. Chris Cato to my left. Brian King in the booth. He will join us shortly. I am Scott Smith. Uh, NCAA tournament time. It is here. I hope you've filled out your bracket. I have not. As we tape this, I have not filled it out, but I'm going to lean on some of your insights. Our guest last week, Casey Jacobson he of was good. Fox. Uh, I'm going to pull from him a little bit, and I think we're going to come up with a, a final four here shortly. You're going to put me on the spot, but, you know, like I can't put too much thought into these things. The, the years that I've done better, uh, that I've won a bracket pool or come close to it, or the years that I said, wait until the last minute and filled it out. So I think you're yeah. on the right track, but don't forget to Venmo me, Vin -mo -me your Entry oh, money, I, or your back am bracket? Am I in your count. bracket? You need to be. Okay, this, this is the is one this to be the, in. The Cato family bracket, yeah, or this is this the, a work bracket? This is the Cato family bracket. Oh, that is the more prestigious. We're, yeah, right? prizes are awarded to even the last place finisher, which you did finish last last year. Did so, I really? Yeah, you did. So you need oh, to. You're going to improve your standing here. Uh, you can't nowhere to go but up, right? So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just fake it until we make it, and uh, you know that's commonly what I do because vernacular that's used during March Madness, like uh, you know, bracket busters, Cinderellas, uh, quadrants, bubbles, you know, you name it. We'll just sporadically inject these words into today's podcast and moving forward the, these next few weeks to make it seem like we have all the answers that you could possibly need. So are you ready for your final four? I am. I finished filling mine out this morning because okay. I knew you'd put some pressure on Very me. Very good. Um, you know, I've got a few upsets in there. I'm not going to give you those. Th that's where I make my money yeah. is on the upsets. But I'll give you my final four And we here. have time, too. We can always we can hit those at the end if you want to. Well, we'll see what happens. we got to talk. The subscription we gotta talk. The most service. important tournament is the serial tournament. we got to talk about that, that too. Will, yeah, we'll All right, that. so we're going out of the South. Arizona okay. is defeating right. Alabama oh, in the oh, Elite Eight. Ooh, Sorry, ooh, Brian King. Ooh, wow. Arizona, Brian, it's you. Yeah, I, I know. Well, well part that, of the part of this, stung a little understand bit. that part of this is me not wanting to jinx my team. Gotcha. So I'm willing to forfeit a correct pick to pick Arizona okay. and not say Alabama in the Final Four. All right, All right then I've got uh, coming out of the, what would this be, the East, this would be Duke. Five seed Duke wow. heating up at the right time. They are heating got up. Got all right the time. pieces taking down Purdue in the Elite Eight to advance. So you got Duke and Bama on one side okay. of the Final Four. Uh, out of the Midwest, we have, as he consults, Texas. We have Texas. They're another hot team. You want to beat Houston before Houston gets to the Final Four because the Final Four is being hosted in. Houston. Houston. So we got Texas with the link, the size, the defense to take down Houston. And then coming out of the West region, we have one of your Pac 12 teams. UCLA. Okay. Uh, I love a team in a tournament. Give me a team that plays great defense, and Mick Cronin's bunch can get after it, even without their best defensive player out because of injury, Jalen Carter. They can get after it on D. I got UCLA, Texas, Bama, Duke. What do you think? Well, I've been on vacation for the last few days, so actually I looked at the bracket for the first time five minutes ago. Oh, my so, goodness. Uh, keep that in mind as I give you my final four, uh, and I'm glad that we have, no, we have no matching teams. This is good. This could be bad for you or me. Or both of us. Give it to us. Uh, so I do have Alabama. I, I think uh, I think they're probably the strongest team, and they, they may be my my champion. Uh, but I do have Bama uh, winning their region. I have Houston winning their region. I'm not going to go just strict one seeds. Uh, I also have Marquette. I'm leaning on Casey's advice last week. Um, I do like them. A number two seed. Uh, they're two, right? Marks. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, and then I'm going Gonzaga. I think this yeah. is another team that has the familiarity. They're playing well right now. A three seed, and I think they get to the Final Four as. Well, that Gonzaga, would that be Gonzaga, UCLA, and the Sweet 16? That would be incredible. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Wow. Okay, I, li I like yours. I, s I especially like your Alabama pick. Okay. Should we bring uh, Brian in? Brian, are you ready to reveal your Final Four, or are you not? Yeah, sure. There why not? Oh, okay, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, let's have it. Hi, Brian. Hi there, Cato. Good, good to see you. Is <laughs> that good peach? To be here. Are you wearing a peach polo This today? is a uh, yes. Yeah, very peach. springy. Okay. I, like I like it. Yeah, it was good top of the clean pile. Uh, <laughs> Always a good call. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, my final four. Which Chris's is not, because he's wearing the same shirt yesterday, last week. <laughs> a week. That gave me a week to do laundry. Come on. Uh, my final four. I, I got one one seed, and it's Alabama. Oh, no. Don't uh, jinx us, Brian. I know. Don't do it. I, I got to. It's the only time I can pick Alabama in the final four. Uh, I got them playing Kansas State. Okay. Yeah. You and liked then, that Casey Jacobson advice last week, too, I didn't did. You? With that and little uh, dwarfish point guard of theirs. I did, and they actually look pretty strong. <laughs> then my other uh, half, I got Xavier and UCLA. Xavier. Mick Both? Cronin at okay. UCLA. Then I got uh, Bama and UCLA. The, uh, so you and I like so the Bruins. Yeah. yeah. We like both those Okay, teams. I feel like all three of us are going to hit none of those. Uh, probably I will not. say Houston will not make it out of Birmingham, though. Oh, 
Yeah, the Houston, Houston will kinda, be the first number one seed to be at, knocked out. Did Houston get mm. jobbed a little there mm. on that uh, since they're going to Birmingham where Auburn, who's in their region, right. it's a home game for Auburn. It if is. Auburn makes it past Iowa, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Very good. Um, and and we do have some NFL news kind of breaking today as, yeah. as we tape this, so maybe we just get a little reaction. It sounds like the Aaron Rodgers deal to the New York Jets is going through. He confirmed it on the Pat McAfee show this morning. Right. So, uh, you know, much in the same model as uh, his predecessor, the great Brett Favre. Uh, he is off to play for the New York Jets, and this after, of course, signing uh, all the receivers from Green Bay over to play I was going to say, Brett Favre didn't have a wish list, did he? I don't recall him having a. Yeah, well, I mean, he was a little bit longer in the tooth. And yeah. so I think there was a little bit more of a flyer on Favre at the time. Uh, but we don't have to. Bring, where, where Brian, you go? bring Brian. Every time we start talking thinks, football, he, he disappears. Thinks if you and I talk to each other for two seconds, that he gets to disappear. Brian, get back in here. This is a three way relationship, buddy. And, oh, he grabbed a drink. That's what <laughs> he was trying to do. Oh, okay. got he a, went to the break room. He's got a Budweiser. Yeah, what no. okay. uh, so what do you think about the, the Brian uh, Rogers wish list? Like, uh, I mean, it sounds like this is happening. They've already gotten Lazard, right? Yeah. yeah and Randall Cobb's maybe happening. It's kind of strange. To, I mean, because Rodgers is still under contract. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like he's LeBron. And he says he's going to take his talents to New York. It's he's under contract by the Packers. And the Packers sit there, work out a deal with New York. Or they can sit there and say, you know what? We're just going to hold off and wait till well, I think trade it, deadline. I think it tells you everything you need to know about the relationship between the Packers and Aaron Rodgers right now. Yeah. Like, I think the, 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 the entity that wants this to happen most is Green Bay. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> because bringing him back is $60 million, And I think they're ready to move on to the Jordan Love era uh, forever mm -hmm. long that's going to be. So, and and those, those negotiations have, you know, broken down between he and the team. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't know who has the power in this relationship right now. I know they're trying to work out, you know, terms and contract and all that kind of stuff, how this is all going to go down. I'm sure he's going to sign to a, a different deal with the Jets. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, the Jets, they're running out of options because some of these other free agent oh, quarterbacks are getting yeah, soaked they're up. Garoppolo's yeah. in Vegas now. Uh, Baker Mayfield signing, we should mention that too, <laughs> signing with the Bucks. I kind of yeah. like that move. I yeah. think that that's kind of a nice little fit because there's, there's still a lot of upside. You know, I, I, I don't expect it to be a genuine quarterback battle. I think Baker's going to be the guy. But, um, yeah, I, I do kind of like that. I like the move, too. Take a flyer I, on it. Um, you know? Remind me, uh, a Bucks new offensive coordinator, but he salvaged. Dave Canales. Salvaged Geno Smith, right? And, and yeah. I think that yeah. appeals to Baker. I, I think that, you know, he could have another reclamation project here with Baker. But Baker showed some good things even on, on short order in L.A. last year when he went over there. I mean, that was a that was a tank situation right. for them. They just needed a quarterback, and he got in there, and he played, I think, when he was like 72 hours on the roster. Yeah. He was already on the field, and, and I thought he did some decent things. So, I don't know. I yeah. mean, we'll see. This is obviously, you know, the, the bar has been lowered here. It's not <laughs> Brady. You know, we're trying to – salvage a team here that can go out there and be competitive in the south and i think that that's an interesting signing out of the out yeah. of the names that had circulated i do like baker mayfield do you like uh tampa bay or tampa baker better brian <laughs> as of <a> please <laughs> moniker let, let this die i don't know i mean i uh, kind of looking forward to baker i think it's an ideal situation for him no i yeah. mean there's actually no expectations you get for to throw here. passes to mike evans and chris godwin that's I know. tough to beat and it's it I, is. I, I, it's a good I situation i mean they got him at a great price yeah you what know. is it one one year for four, four more i think four right? but yeah. and a max yeah, of like eight and a half i think so by the way they also have re-signed levante david to a one-year contract back for one year seven seven million which uh, you know he he probably could have gotten at least more yeah. years uh, somewhere else. It's kind of the heartbeat of that defense. Jamel yeah. Dean a couple days ago That's signing huge. before hitting free agency. That was huge. So, uh, you know, tip of the cap to Mike Greenberg, the guy that kind of manages that what seemed to be a mm -hmm. disastrous salary cap situation at the beginning of the offseason. And now they're bringing guys back. And some of them are coming back on hometown discounts. It's it's how you want to draw it up, right? So, All right, then. I've yeah. got the Bucks winning the South again. There you go. All right. <laughs> That's happening. Yeah. Um, all right. End of the show. Oh, wait. Our guest. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. He's gone again. <laughs> Brian, come back. Tell us who's on the show today. How about USF head coach Alex Golish? Okay. okay. I like that. Is Spring that, football's underway. Oh, okay. That's football, not basketball. We are right. talking. <laughs> they don't have a basketball coach. Oh, they fired coach their yet. basketball coach. Yes. Okay. Yes, correct. So, so we'll get him in, and we'll talk to him. We'll get uh, his thoughts and his outlook so far of the uh, USF football He's got team. a lot of energy. And he's gonna need it. It's a tough. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough gig. It's I'm looking forward to come it. in, hit the hit the 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 ground running, and you know, 
and I think that the, they're showing a lot of promise. I mean, the building projects, what they've added, you know, the stuff that you can't really control on the field. Uh, yeah. You know, they've done a decent job of, of trying to lure in some recruits, and, um, and this guy's going comes. out and trying to win it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got Alex, and then we have at the end. End of uh, the show? The, this is the most talked about thing that's happened Holy cow. I mean, throughout the, the best and worst thing we've ever done. I know. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. We'll update the uh, cereal bracket. Remember, we started with 16 cereals, and uh, I will let you know there are some quite a bit upsets. In so here. we are going to reveal the Elite Eight, and, and it's not you're not off the hook, viewers. So we invite you now, once we release the Elite Eight, that is now y your opportunity to get back out and vote for the final four. Yeah, unlike bracket you do in your office pool you only get one you get to double down on your favorite right. cereal your preferred cereal in this bracket that, yeah, yeah yeah you could change along the way yeah. so for the gambling freak like Chris Cato <laughs> this is perfect <laughs> I mean you don't win anything except you know the adulation of your peers and us I like to have some action on both sides I think we are gonna figure out a way though at the end to have at least not that we're gonna have any sway over the viewer yeah. but maybe we can at the final four we can actually take have a taste off we should. Ooh, yeah. And if perhaps get may maybe that does uh, kind of sway some of the yeah. folks that have lost their favorite cereal already in the Sweet 16. Right. And that they're, they're looking for a new team to jump on. Exactly. So I like that idea. If we don't eat cereal at some point in this process, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very good. All right. All right. Very good, uh, BK. Now you can disappear. Now okay. <laughs> disappear for 25 minutes, and we will see you momentarily. All right. We invite you to uh, to join us on our podcast ride here. Uh, if you are listening and you want to watch, go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. If you're watching and you want to listen or subscribe, take out your phone. Zap that QR code. It's on the screen right there in the bottom right-hand corner. It'll take you to all of our shows. Uh, I, I do think it's something like, um, you know, one shining moment, Luther Vandross. You know, like it's uh, – it's all on the line, one shining moment. They're frozen in time, and that's where all our shows are, frozen in time. And if you're still there at the end, we'll let you cut down the nets. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, we invite you to like and subscribe. All right, we are going to take a hard right turn, and we are switching uh, topics, getting into um, you know the gambling uh, intersection in sports is, you know, it's all over the place right. now. So play, states are legalizing these wagers. and But this, this I thought, was interesting because – we have a scripted event in WWE wrestling, and it's scripted in the sense that we know what the outcome is. I don't want to get on the bad side of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> any wrestlers. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's fake. It's real athleticism, but the, we already know, or they already know, who's winning this thing. Right. But now they're trying to introduce it. So there's uh, a handful of states that are kicking this idea around. I believe Michigan, Colorado, Indiana. And the idea they, th that they have with this is... This is the WWE. WWE. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so while these matches, the, the result is known, I guess they share this with uh, an accounting firm, Ernst & Young. This, uh, I, that's the one I use they do, for all of they my do your secretive taxes, business. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then that, that will, of course, be a top secret thing. It's kind of like, you know, when the Academy Awards, you can bet on those. Well, somebody knows what the result of that it's is. It's the same accounting firm. They do the Emmys and the Academy Awards. Okay. So they're really good, supposedly, at, you know, keeping this, the results in a sealed envelope. Only a handful of people that have signed a non-disclosure know the outcome. So that's the thought here, if these states go along with it, is that people could bet on the outcome of what do you I mean, what do, you, what do you think about that? I, look, I, to me, I, I don't, I would never do it. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm not taking a moral high ground on it. I just, I'm not really. You don't know enough about who's going to. I don't want to have to watch it. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't, don't want to be lured in. You know, like for those that gamble and, you know, they find themselves watching like Wednesday Mac football games. It's like, uh, oh, I could there. probably be doing something more productive with my time. Although I will say WWE is on Fox. So we invite you to watch. Smackdown but, every Friday uh, night. Baby. Yeah, I, there's enough things on my list of to do's. And but I. I do think it's going to be – it could be hugely successful. I think so. Because it's it's drawing fans that already love this stuff into a deeper level of involvement, you know? It's and, where they uh, can get into debt with their love, yeah. Man, I, I do think it – I think it is a kind of a, a, a match made in heaven um, for those fans. But well, do you it, like it? Will you, well, be, will you be throwing no, some action No, there's down? no way I'm throwing action on this because, I don't know, even though they say it's going to be tightly controlled, I could just see – a leak, right? Or some wrestlers. Well, more hands in the pot make it right for corruption, right? Exactly. And, and my, I'm spinning this forward. Okay, if we can bet on the outcome of a scripted match, then 
give us some prop bets. Like, That's can, exactly can we can right. bet on the odds of whether one wrestler is going to pull a foreign object out of his tights? Yeah. Uh, the odds of whether the referee is going to get knocked out or uh, whether a, a wrestler who's not supposed to be involved in the match is going to suddenly appear and interfere, which is one of my favorite things about pro wrestling, right? You know, yeah. this guy comes from the, the dressing rooms. It's uh, unexpected. Or yet. he's been sleeping under the mat <laughs> for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> and his, his music is already queued up. So, <laughs> amazingly, there's there a song. But yeah, so I think I do think it could be interesting. I think it's probably going to happen and that a lot of people are going to uh, lose some money on it. <laughs> I wish we could rewind that. I mean, because my wrestling knowledge kind of stops, like, in the early 90s, late 80s. Yeah. Like, if, if we go back in time and it's like, can I gamble on whether, uh, you know, this is 12-year-old Scott, so I probably shouldn't be gambling. Yes, right? you should. Um, but, you know, is Jake the Snake Roberts going to disgrace his opponent by dropping his boa constrictor on him? Is, well, that's a given, right? Is, is you know, Brutus the Barber Beefcake going to be chopping off this guy's mullet? I got a good one. Which turnbuckle will George the Animal Steel eat first? That's a good call. Yeah. Yeah, so that's I, I love the idea of old school guys, but yeah, I mean I'm sure it's gonna oh maybe uh, it's gonna happen. Maybe if someone hits a big jackpot, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase comes out with a briefcase and hands them their winnings. <laughs> that's how they could do that. Is he still alive? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, we've we've lost a few, but yeah. uh, I, th I feel like Ted DiBiase still. I feel could. like with inflation, he would be what now? The the, the billion. He would have to be the billion, billion dollar man. Oh, who he, knows what he's done with his investments? <laughs> if he went crypto, I mean, it could have come back to haunt him. Ugh. Silicon Valley Bank is right. All exactly. His money. Um, all right. So this is a uh, this next story, the, the Dion effect. And we've talked about Dion Sanders and and of course all the headlines that he's grabbed as the new Colorado football coach, and, and it all all makes sense, right? He, his nickname is Prime Time for a reason, um, and it was that way as a player that they're. He would talk, and there would be more eyeballs, and he would back it up with his play, and he's maybe the best cornerback to have ever played in the NFL. But it, this is now carried over as a head coach. And so now ESPN, trying to carry these spring football games, had to make a decision. Like, we, we're going to carry one spring game. Who's it going to be? And over the likes of Georgia and, and your beloved Crimson Tide, they have chosen the Colorado Buffaloes to air the spring game. It's the new sexy thing. It I, is. You can't blame ESPN for it either. There's more hype around what Dion's doing than what's going on in Tuscaloosa or Athens right now because those are known quantities, right? So this tells me that the next Aflac insurance commercial with Dion and Saban is going to be interesting. But um, I think it's a good move by ESPN. You know, the, really? the, the I'm surprised that you take that road. Well, it reminds me of when Saban came to Tuscaloosa and the spring games all of a sudden were sold out. Well, they didn't sell tickets, but they were maxed out at complete attendance for the first couple of years that's what it's going to be like at Colorado and it's because of this energy that Dion's brought I mean in recruiting he's uh he just with this class signed this five-star Cormani McLean uh from South Florida who Alabama Georgia and many other other of those top programs were looking for right. uh and he brought one of Alabama's associate defensive coordinators Charles Kelly onto his staff so he's already uh cutting into some of these powerful programs and I'm not saying I think the Buffaloes probably win six games this season maybe they make a bowl game but in two years with a depleted Pac-12 where you have USC and UCLA go going to the Big Ten next year I could see them winning eight or nine or ten games next year and who knows with an expanded college football playoff I think this has actually zero to do with how good the Buffaloes are going to be I mean I don't know nobody knows I mean that's that's part of the intrigue they're going to be better spring. There's well, no doubt. Sure. I mean, they were one of the worst teams in FBS last year, but I think that like it's not about that. And so everybody that's freaking out that like, oh, you know, it's all the it's the hype machine versus the the tried and true Bamas and the Georgias of the world. Like that's what people want to see quality football. But no, it's spring football. Everybody calm down, right? right? This is a spring game. It's a different story when we're talking to talking about fall football games. Like I don't think the intrigue will be nearly as high. I think at first there will be some level of intrigue, but we're talking a spring football game where you're probably going to be able to mic up Deion Sanders. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, it is reality TV for college football and it makes total sense. So like in that regard, like Bama's kind of boring, All right? Like George is kind of boring. Like, yes, they play football at a high level and they're going to be really competitive and people are going to want to watch those games in the fall. But, in the spring, right? No, this is exactly we've heard plenty of exactly mic'd up Saban, it, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, I think that uh, it, it'll make a, a lot of sense, you know, to to see him on the spring stage. Uh, fall is a, is a different matter altogether, and how good this team can be, how f quickly they can flip the oh, switch. I, I'm I, sure. I think he'll be. Uh, you'll have him on fall uh, TV as well. They, uh, Colorado will have more national games televised yeah. than they did in 
a long time. Yeah, and, and you know that's but that's part of it. We're, we're, we're talking about inter- at the end of the day, college football is entertainment, and so in whatever form that takes, um, you know, I think that uh, I'm I'm for it. I mean, I don't think he's watering down the product. I think that he's no. just a personality that is. He's a little bit of a lightning rod, and it's dynamic. And and if if you play for him, or if you're a Buffs fan, most likely, like, hey man, you're all about it. No, people are talking. They're finally talking about us. Yeah, people are talking about you again. Um, And you know what? People are also talking about, and this is college baseball. Doesn't happen very often, but boy, I'll tell you what. Earlier this week, (laughs) we saw maybe one the worst strike call by an umpire. And I don't know that we can show you the video, but I'm going to do my best to describe it for you. So this is New Orleans, Mississippi Valley. They're playing in a game. It's the top of the ninth. Uh, Valley is down, I think, by four runs. Right. And and there's there's two outs. So this batter, uh, his name is uh, Devon Mims. He he overreacts to this second strike call. Which was a bad call. It was. It was low. I don't. The way he reacted was over the top. Like it was. was the, The ball was a little low, maybe a little out of the zone, but it wasn't awful. Right, so I mean, it was an off-speed pitch. It dropped a little bit out of the zone. It was a little low, but he was jumping around, overreacting. I didn't think his reaction was, was, was that egregious. Okay. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, okay. He jumped up and down. He Either way, that, that's okay. not the story. The, right. the point is, is that what he, his overreaction to that was almost as if the umpire said, "Hang on, hang on there, buddy. You ain't seen nothing yet." And the next pitch was a pitch that was okay. So the catcher is setting up low and away, yeah. and it's a one-two pitch. He's setting up lone way, and he had to reach for it. So, I mean, this thing was like two feet out of the zone. It was not even close. And that umpire rung him up. <laughs> and, every, and you can see the reaction shot of even the team that it benefited, right? The, even, yeah. even for New Orleans, like you see the reaction shot of these fans in, this, in the dugout or the, the players in the dugout going, whoa, are you kidding me? The, New, Orle- the New Orleans ballistic. play-by-play announcer said, oh, this the ump's name, whatever it is, drummer. Drummer just wants to go home. Like That's it, exactly what it was. And I it obviously, was it payback for him chirping the pitch before? It could have been. I mean, it, it very well could have been. And this game was it was over. I think people are, have reacted on social media as if, like, this was the worst thing that could have ever happened. I mean, it is a bad call. Well, I, well, and he was suspended. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, the conference suspended him indefinitely. So he, he And because of the headlines that it, it received, he's probably not going to be umpiring college baseball. I don't think he should because I think it was payback. I don't think it was just that he wanted the game to be over he was getting back at this player for so do you think an umpire should lose his career for one bad call no I don't think he should lose his career but I definitely agree with the suspension and he probably won't ump in the Southland again but there are other conferences where he could revive his career probably maybe (laughs) I'm not gonna say I condone it but it was pretty funny because I've seen, uh, you know, my, my son plays Little League Baseball, and I've seen umpires like that. It's like once they get to that last strike, they're already off the field. Like they they're have done. both feet in the, you know, they're in the parking lot by yeah. now. They're, they're done. And that's exactly what this umpire did. He's like, that's strike three, boom, I'm out. And he starts walking. <laughs> Everybody's going ballistic and going crazy. So, yeah, I mean, look, it, it does undermine what we, the standard we hold officials to. Yeah. Um, you know, but. I think he, he I don't think his career should be ruined for it. But man, <laughs> he does need to get his vision checked. Did you see the New Orleans won the next game of that series thirty to two? Yeah. Thirty to two. So Well there, no so, umpire was, was getting home early that game. Yeah. Wow. All right. Hey, what do you say we talk a little college football? A little bit more with our next guest. Go Bulls. Let's do it. Well, Chris, our guest today was a finalist for the Broyles Award last year at Tennessee, which goes to the nation's top assistant coach, and it helped him land his first head coaching job. We welcome new USF head football coach Alex Golish to the Nod Pod. Coach Golish, thanks for hopping on with us. I mean, you've been at it for now, what, about three months? What's your favorite part of living in Tampa, Florida so far? Well, yeah, it's almost three months. Um, Man, the weather, pretty good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. to be honest with you, I hadn't, hadn't explored just a whole lot. Um, the most exploring I've done is is uh, official visit weekends where we had a chance to take some recruits out and and go grab dinner and, and play a little top golf and get out on the water. So that's as much exploring as I've done. I feel like I actually probably got more exploring done recruiting here over the years than, than since I've lived here. But, you know, th- this first year is going to be probably a lot of that. And so I'll explore here when we get a little bit of time in July, but I'll explore after we, we, we get our feet on the ground and, and get everything established that 
we got to we got to establish to give ourselves a chance to win. Where are you in the process right now? I mean, are you still getting to know your players? Are you still plugging staff into roles? Where are you right now in the planning phase? Yeah, you're you, you pretty much hit on it. Um, you know, we we really fortunate because we were able to have the staff for the most part here early. Um, really fortunate, a bunch of guys and, and gals decided to to join me right when I got here. Um, you know, there were some jobs, especially some some external type jobs that uh, in recruiting roles and graphic design and those types of things that that took a little bit, but we were able to get our feet on the ground and, and recruit uh, right when we got here, which was the biggest part of it. You know, it's the way the calendar falls. I took the job on December 3rd and and the guys went home on December 5th. And so we didn't have players here for a month, but we were out recruiting Then the players got back uh, for spring semester and we were right back out recruiting. So it wasn't really till the beginning of February that we actually got here with our guys and we're able to go to work. You talk about getting to know guys every day is is a a huge part of us setting the culture, us setting the expectations, the standards of what the program is and where we're going. Recruiting the way the calendar is, everything is accelerated. So you you spend half your time recruiting, half your time with the players or or inst- installing everything, it, not just offense, defense, but how we practice what we eat, where we eat, you know, what our protocols are for sports medicine, what our protocols are for strength and conditioning. Your every day is is about as jam-packed as you can pack it. Well, you mentioned the accelerated process and then a, another key word in culture. You know, you come from a program at Tennessee that had won 18 games and consecutive bowl game appearances the last two years to a program that has one FBS win in the last two years so I, I imagine that to-do list has to get made pretty quickly. How, how quickly did you put that to-do list together and, and how did you prioritize it? Yeah, it prioritize is the, is the word of, of my life um, right now. It's, you know, you, you knew what you were going into in terms of the, the job and, and the previous history. I think you have to embrace uh, the history, you have to respect the history. You got to understand the history. But uh, like I've said since the day I got here, I really don't care. Um, everything is about about what's next and where we're going and, and how we're doing it and our daily approach to life, our daily approach to how we work, our daily approach to how we treat each other, how we sleep, how we eat, how we hydrate, uh, our daily approach to every aspect of our lives as coaches, but certainly as players, is the only thing I care about. Hmm. And so every day you, you figure out what's important right now um, and and you attack it. And it's exactly the same with our players. What's important right now? Um, and it's the little things in everything we do. You know, we talk about how, how you do anything is how you do everything. And so it's how, how I wake up, my attitude, my effort, my attention to detail and everything I do, how I go to class, how I treat my teammates, how I treat people on campus. Um, how I train, my attitude, my effort while I train. Uh, I mean, every single thing is is pinpointed, dissected, evaluated. We use the word process in, in, in everything that we do. Um, and we try to be as consistent as imaginably possible so we can get end results and then evaluate those end results by evaluating our process. And, uh, you know, in all reality, that's not really coach talk. It's it's real in what we're doing. And the the positive to coming into a situation where there hasn't been a lot of success in terms of end results on the field is that the guy's eyes are wide open and they're listening. Um, and I, you know, in, in my life, I've had, in my professional life, I've had the luxury of walking into situations like this, what seems to be every job that I've ever had the opportunity <laughs> to take. Um, and so I've seen it, seen it, been a part of it, uh, of turning programs from, from about as bad as you can get to, to competing for championships. And, and the previous place you talk about Tennessee is a really, really good example of that. And on top of not having success prior to us getting there, you had sanctions for, by the NCAA that in a lot of ways would be as close to the death penalty as you can get. And. The only thing we didn't talk about was the sanctions or anything that had to do with it. All we ever talked about was where we were going. 
and we talk about setting standards rather than than goals and and hopes and dreams and talk about setting standards and the standard here is to be the best in the country and so that's what we fight for every day i wake up every morning to to set a standard to be the best in the country at everything we do um and that's the standard that we're not deviating from that there's no movement from it there's no man i hope it goes like this we're we're going to set a process and and set standards for everything we do and the only thing i can evaluate is where we are right now and then we'll figure out tomorrow tomorrow well your hiring certainly energized the usf fan base around here especially with your offensive resume what you've done at tennessee what you did under josh heupel at ucf before that and so that energizes fans. And then also uh, a few days ago, the 2023 schedule comes out where people can put eyeballs on dates and paper and see who you're playing when. And I know that that's way down the road for you. You're still taking care of those day-to-day details that you just went through right there. But if you'll just indulge me for a moment, it's a schedule that looks completely different from anything USF has had. I mean, you've got five new team, six new teams coming into the American Athletic Conference. You guys are playing five of those. And then my, of course, there's no war on I-4 this season because uh, UCF is off to the Big 12. But my eyeballs, my selfish uh, SEC eyes are drawn to that September 16th date at Raymond James Stadium. Um, Coach, have you tested the goalposts there to see if uh, they can withstand students uh, pulling them down and maybe uh, carrying them out and throwing them in the bay because you were obviously on staff at Tennessee last year when you guys knocked off the mighty Crimson Tide? Yeah, to be honest with you, you're, you're going to think it's a coach speak answer. I, I was literally not thought one second about it. Um, I knew you would say that, <laughs> but that's yeah. the right answer. <laughs> Is it, Man, hopefully I don't come across calculated. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I, I go back to, to the beginning of this whole thing and in this job and what it is, you know, I, I'm, so energized by being here you you talk about fan base being energized i'm energized to be here i'm energized every morning i walk in here um and really grateful to be here i i I think the biggest thing about anything you do is is embracing the job that you're at embracing the opportunity that you have and i'm just energized and, and beyond excited to be here um now the next step of that is turning this place into into what people expect, and that's to win football games. The offense is great. Um, you know, people people are expecting. I've had a lot of questions, man. Are you guys going to look like Tennessee looked? Um, and and be honest with you, if we lined up in the eye and huddled every snap, I think there'd be a lot of pissed off administrators <laughs> or fans. So, yeah, the, the the Tennessee time and and working with Josh and and being able to build that offense into what it was, was really, really exciting. Again, I I talk about history, like nobody here cares about that. I certainly, I'm, I can embrace it and I'm grateful for the opportunity and the time there, but nobody cares. Um, The only thing people care about is us scoring one more point than our opponents. And that literally starts right now (laughs) and and ends right now. And then tomorrow we'll worry about tomorrow. Um, But Will it be exciting for this fan base to have Alabama come to town here? I'm sure it will be. Um, it'll be exciting for for all of us to to play a game that week. Um, that you know, September. You said 16th. Yes. Um, man, we got two more before that. Again, I know I sound like a coach when I say that. Um, I, we're so far from being able to play a football game. Like legitimately, it feels like it's 10 years away. <laughs> but. But I'm sure I'm sure that team will be be excited to play here in Tampa, and I'm sure they'll be ready to roll. Um, you get a chance to, to coach against arguably the best to ever do it in Coach Saban, and it'll be an honor lined up across from him. And we'll have a plan, and we'll have a plan to go execute at a high high clip, just like we did a year ago. Um, give ourselves a chance to go win that football game. Uh, Coach, what my co-host didn't tell you is that he is a, a diehard Alabama fan. So I just need you to tell me how sweet it felt to beat them last year. Oh, please answer in coach speak here. No, I can give you that. <laughs> our was about the sweetest thing I tasted in a long ass time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I bet it was. That looked like one fo- best football game of the year, probably. It was, and uh, what a time to be in Knoxville that must have been. 
Uh, so I also want to ask your your roots. Um, you got started as a GA at Oklahoma State under Mike Gundy. Was that right around the time of the I'm a man, I'm 40 rant? Was that that year? It was the year. I, I got there right after that. Um, no. and literally that offseason after that. So I knew exactly how old Coach Gundy <laughs> was. Yeah. And uh, I did not ever bring it up. <laughs> Who was the most influential coach that you worked under or with? Um, be honest with you, my high school offensive coordinator, Jeff Jones, um, hmm. is, is the guy that, that I had my, my last couple of years of high school is a guy that really got me thinking about being a teacher and being a coach. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a teacher by trade and he gave me my first job. He became a head coach right after that, hired me. Um, and my first job was coaching high school ball and, he he taught me what it was like to to one work to love the game but more importantly than that love your players and he's the ultimate example of of giving more of yourself than taking from the group and and uh it was at that point i realized i wanted to wanted to do what he did which was give back to young people and, and affect lives and he happens to have a office right down the hall here he's our director of player development here um, and that's the one guy that, that I can always pinpoint to, to change in my life, to, to want to give back to young people and, and to serve, serve young people. And, um, and boy, it happened about what, 20 years ago. Now I'm getting old, man. Um, <laughs> and, but that was about 20 years ago. Um, and, and I'd say in every imaginable way changed my life, at least the course of it professionally to want to do, I, I never thought it'd be this. Um, I, I really thought I was going to be a special ed teacher and a high school coach and, and, um, live a pretty peaceful life there in suburban Columbus, Ohio. But guy started, I'm here in Tampa running, running the coolest football program in the country. And, and I'm beyond excited to do so. Well, the seeds were planted long ago, and here we go. USF with a, a new leader at the charge and uh, a, a bright future ahead. So, Coach Golish, we wish you the best of luck here in 2023 and moving forward. Thank you for carving a little bit of time to join us. No, thanks for having me. Go Bulls. I appreciate y'all. Well, Coach Golish definitely has uh, – he's focused. He has the intensity, and, uh, you know, he's got his work cut out for him, but – I don't know. I mean, even just hearing him talk uh, right now about like how in the moment he is with this team, uh, it kind of makes you think like there's there's going to be a, a drastic turn here uh, in 2023. Complete turnaround, complete change of culture. Yep. Right. I mean, those guys, those college football coaches, especially when you're new to a program like that, they work incredibly hard. I don't know how they don't sleep. They don't right. eat. It's not yeah. just winning football games, but you're up against the clock as well, yeah. as, we, as we saw with the previous yeah. coach. So uh, April 14th, spring game on campus for the Bulls. Uh, we do want to get you updated, and this was, this was again, the biggest thing we've ever done here in the Nod Pod. Yeah. And that is launching the Sweet 16, serial Sweet 16 last week. Got a lot of people talking, a lot of people um, – a lot of hate mail. I got to be perfectly honest. Same here. People yeah. wanted golden grams in there. They wanted Fruit Loops and and tricks and you know all everybody's favorites. I'm sorry, people. Okay, look, <laughs> we can only please everybody, and we're most important. We want to make sure that we were pleased first. Please ourselves. Yeah, yeah, the cereals that we like. We have a little bias. Uh, that's part of the selection <laughs> committee. Next, maybe next year we kind of we fill it out. We get a 32 team field. I we, think we have to because, as you mentioned, I got outrage. People, I have, clo I've lost close relationships because of this. People yeah, in the newsroom that I respect very much. Mark Wilson came up to me and was slapped you in the outraged. Face. Yeah, he gave me the Will Smith slap because, honey, he smacked me because he said, "Keep my cereal out of your mouth." Uh, keep it in your mouth. The <laughs> honey Smacks. He was outraged. Honey Smacks. Was oh, a, that's that, an awful cereal. Like, I, a, I mean, a lot of love for Mark, but that is an awful cereal. Uh, most of the feedback I did get, though, was from people. I, I shared this on my Facebook and got a lot of, hey, where's Corn Pops? Hey, yeah. where's blah, blah, blah. Corn Pops. I uh, know. So anyway, uh, we, <laughs> well, let's, we let's, do appreciate all of the listeners and viewers that did. We got a lot of votes. Yeah. So we're cutting it off. Margaret, can we cut off the voting? Okay. We're cutting it off as we speak, and we're going to give you the results. Uh, right now 
to the Elite Eight. Again, this is not time to check out. You're still voting in the next round. Right. All right, so just to recap, there's our 1 through 16. And, look, I thought I predicted some upsets. I thought life was going to advance, and, and they didn't. Look at that. I mean, so here All we right. go. Cinnamon Toast Crunch in the biggest landslide. Uh, they had 79% of the vote. They advance as our one seed. Not a surprise there. We got Frosted Mini Weeks, the, the, the mini hay bales, as you yeah. described them last week. They advance as the underdog nine De- seed. Defeating your life that you championed. I wanted another 5-12 upset here. I liked cinnamon checks. People didn't see it. I think, that, again, underrated program, and it'll take a little bit of time to get some traction. But Lucky Charms, the team that you're wearing on your shirt right now, they're advancing. And then we have rounding out the uh, bottom, the, what is that, the south region. Uh, <laughs> is that Fruity Pebbles? Okay, Fruity Pebbles advances. Uh, not a surprise. A big surprise here, I think, on the right side of the bracket. Yeah. that's So Honey Nut Cheerios tops the Cocoa Krispies. That's a shock. No, wait. Yeah, yeah. that's Krispies. Cocoa Krispies, yeah, that's a shock. So 11 seed upset. Uh, we got Captain Crunch. A lot of people like them. They may be a favorite. Uh, Frosted Flakes. I, th- I mean, I kind of – I thought Apple Jacks had it. I thought Apple Jacks would win they that. They had that a ten, strong usually there's a 10 the beats a 7 in yeah, every tournament. Yeah. But, no, Tony Tiger said, no, you're not great. But our biggest upset was Raisin Bran topping Cocoa Pebbles. Wow. Not, not a good uh, first round for any Cocoa teams. How, how is that? I thought chocolate was everybody's favorite. This was our closest matchup. 52% voted Raisin Bran, 48% Cocoa Pell. I'm shocked. I am shocked. By that. It goes back to what I said, though. Raisin Bran is sneakily unhealthy. It's got a lot of sugar and probably just as much as Cocoa Pebbles has. I think I think this paves the way for a Frosted Flakes run here. Uh, that, I mean, that kind of makes the bracket a little bit easier, in my opinion. I just you go head-to-head Frosted Flakes and Raisin Bran. I want right. to point out the weird cereals you championed, Life. Cinnamon <laughs> checks. So I tried because of you. And by the way, this yeah. sh- this shirt's tighter this week because of all the cereal I ate I since tell. last week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because of you, I ate cinnamon checks for the first time. And half Be honest. It. Okay, I am. Don't. I'm always I, honest. You're always trying to sell it. No, no I'm you're not. Always over the top. No, oh, give listen. me an honest description of what the the cereal eating experience was like. Well, half of it was good. The half of the cereal that was good were the because if you haven't had cinnamon checks, half of it is just the plain boring checks, which right. do absorb milk very well, as yeah. you said. Uh-huh. And I did let it sit in the bowl for 30 seconds, as you suggested. Yep. But the other half is the the checks are are cinnamon checks, which yes, that's the good part. So just give me cinnamon toast crunch. You got a half. Well, but it's a totally different uh, texture uh, than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, but the good, the taste, which is the most important, the good part of the taste is the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay, so it tastes like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Half of it does. Which is our (laughs) joint one seed. Yeah. And so what do you think? I'm not. Do they deserve to advance or no? Cinnamon checks, no. Oh wow. No, uh, no. Even though that you say they taste like cinnamon toast. They crunch. taste half as good because it's half cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> they taste half as good. Well, half as good should be enough to get you out of the first round. <laughs> so they lose. Right. All right. So now you are ready for the sweetest of sweet eight runs in the cereal tournament, and of course the big dance as well. Um, until the next time we are on, folks. There are no off days. Never. He won't let me have one. Now, can you put that in the washing machine? Okay, I'll just take it. Oh, it's too tight. I can't.